Hello and welcome to the fifth and sadly our final talk in the series for this remarkable Paisley Museum Reimagined project, focusing on the museum's remarkable collection of Paisley shawls. My name is Dr. Vanessa Collingridge. I'm a broadcaster and a writer specialising in culture, history and science. And I'm also a weaver, so it's my absolute pleasure to host these sessions on behalf of One Ren, formerly Renfrewshire Leisure, that looks after Renfrewshire's arts, culture and sport. Of course, Paisley Museum itself is currently closed for an exciting refurbishment programme called Paisley Museum Reimagined. It's due to open again in late 2023, when it promises to come back bigger, better and even more fabulous than before. In the meantime, you can find out more about the proposed plans, this series of talks and the £5 million fundraising campaign to support the work by going to Reimagined dot paisleymuseum.org. Now, one of the reasons why all this is so exciting is that the museum holds what's thought to be one of the largest collections of Paisley shawls anywhere in the world. And it's been officially designated as a recognised collection of significance by Museums and Galleries Scotland that's also supporting these public talks. Our talk tonight is one of a series of events we've been holding to explore and to celebrate the collection. It's being recorded for those of us who can't be with, here, with us live tonight, but don't worry, only the speaker and I will be seen and heard. You can also catch up with previous talks by searching for our One Ren channel on YouTube. In terms of our running order, we'll hear in a moment from our brilliant speaker, now, we've turned off your microphones, but please do use the chat function to say hello and also where you're logging in from and for any respectful comments as we go through the session. However, if you have a question you'd like to ask, even a techie one, please click on the Q&A button next to the chat function and simply type it in and submit it. I'll ask the questions on your behalf or group them together if we have too many to ask individually. The talk is being captioned automatically, but if you're watching live and you want to switch this off, just click on the auto caption button, button at the bottom of the screen. You can change all your settings to suit without affecting anyone else. Finally, there will be a short survey available just before the session closes. It only takes three or four minutes and really helps us design future events for you. So please do fill this in. But now let's get on with our final talk and Q&A. That's a little bit different from the others, as this one isn't from someone working with the historic Paisley Shores at the museum, but instead someone who's very much at the contemporary side of weaving and creativity. Gemma Fraser is an art and design teacher at Castle Head High School, a non-denominational state school in Paisley. But she's also a link teacher with the Glasgow School of Art, a role specifically designed to promote creativity amongst its pupils. Now then, Castle Head joined forces with the Glasgow School of Art back in 2017 on the back of the City of Culture bid with the aim of becoming Scotland's first school of creativity. The partnership was part of a unique collaboration between Glasgow School of Art and Renfrewshire Council, designed to unlock potential in pupils, encourage innovative thinking, and increase attainment and develop the skills needed to thrive, not just at school and work, but in broader society. The partnership continues to grow as part of the Future Paisley Project, Gemma has a degree in fashion and design and absolutely loves her job. With Paisley's rich history in textiles and weaving, Gemma Fraser saw a fantastic opportunity to set up a loom in her classroom. The loom's been there since 2019 and has opened up incredible opportunities for the pupils to be creative and to explore the possibilities weaving has to offer. Weaving develops fine motor skills, hand-eye coordination, as well as improving pupils' concentration, patience and problem-solving skills. Ultimately, weaving allows pupils to explore possibilities and be much more creative. 
Gemma will showcase some of the work that she's been doing with her pupils as part of the Looms in Schools project. She'll start with a short video and we'll then move on to her talk. So please welcome Gemma Fraser for her talk, Looms in Schools. My name is Gemma Fraser, I'm an art and design teacher at Castlehead High School and I'm also lucky enough to be the link teacher with the Glasgow School of Art, we've got a partnership with them and um, I was really lucky with that time that I get on my timetable free to become involved in the Looms in School programme. The museum being shut, they had the looms sitting, uh, not being used and they offered them out to see if any schools would like to take them and use them and having no weaving experience myself, I just thought, why not? This could be a really good opportunity for the pupils. Um, so kind of grabbed the opportunity. Myself, I got to go on a CPD for a little lesson, kind of an afternoon where I myself learned to weave. And um, we kind of just did little small samples and things at that CPD session. So I knew the basic skills. And then from that, the pupils, so I was able to obviously teach the pupils these skills. Personally, during lockdown, I did a bit of weaving myself as well as I found it really relaxing and something to kill some time, which we found ourselves with a lot of. And um, we've been doing some little ones then in class on cardboard looms. You can see Charlie's working away on that just now, where it's very experimental. He's trying different Murano wools, different threads, just anything we find really. Very much about recycling as well. We've got different ribbons. Uh, I've even cut up plastic bags and things that it can be woven into or um, weaving at some points. We even do it in the art curriculum. I've been doing some paper weaving. So some of my National 5 students have used this as like really effective backgrounds for posters and things. So we can weave with any kind of paper and card. It doesn't always have to be yarns. It's really whatever you have lying around. Ah, see. Got you now. Really effective. And then we do a wee so we can pan fill the whole thing and see what we've got like so far. And even the other side of it looks quite interesting. Like you can see sometimes more on the one downstairs. It looks a lot neater in this. Yeah, place. there's like a good side almost and like a rough side. And that's quite cool because it's like fluffy. But that would just be like a little scarf. I know. Well, this is it. My name's Charlie and I'm an S1. I like it because it's very therapeutic and it's like you put your own style into your own weave because it is your weave. Mine took, um, this one right here, mine took I think a couple months. Um, that's because I only done it on Wednesdays. If I'd done it a lot more frequently, I don't think it would take that long. When I first started doing it, well, well, starting to do it, um, I was really kind of scared of it actually because it looked really complicated and I didn't want to break it or anything. But it is, it is pretty um, uh, easy to do with the big comb and it's much faster than doing it with your own hand and the needle. My favourite bit is definitely either the colours and the tassels because I think they're really um, vibrant and they finish off the weave really nicely. My name is David Anderson. I am the faculty head of the design faculty, which includes the art department and the technical department. The Castlehead course are a fantastic addition to the school. It was uh, created in 2020. So it was uh, really brought in as a, as a skills development exercise to, to learn new skills of creativity and to improve hand skills, as well as concentration and ability to maintain uh, a focus on the, the work for a period of time. So we've had over 100 contributors to it. That's including pupils, staff and very a lot of visitors to the school. So uh, a lot of hands have uh, put their skill to this particular item. It's positioned just outside the school office. Uh, we have a small waiting area here and it's a, a showcase piece that I think everybody appreciates when they come into the, the school. 
we take pupils out on a walking tour every year as part of the design faculty so pupils get to learn about the Coates family and the Clarks family and the thread the thread industry and how it, uh, how it really shaped Paisley over, over the years. Uh, the thread industry is obviously massive, Paisley pattern is world renowned uh, and we give the pupils a chance during the tour to, to find out a wee bit more about that. It's just another way that we can broaden our skill set and, and train pupils in an area perhaps that they wouldn't uh, ordinarily have experience or opportunity to develop. We're, um, we're hoping to be known as the School of Creativity on the back of our partnership with Glasgow School of Art and we're keen to promote not just in the art department or in the technical department music, we want the whole school to be promoting creativity skills of problem solving, uh, imagination, curiosity and open-mindedness and I personally believe that by weaving pupils are kind of touching upon all of these skills, you know, oh that bit hasn't worked, I need to work out why, so a wee bit of problem solving in terms of the creativity, the colours they can choose, they can weave with anything, they could turn their weaving into a wall hanging, they could turn it into a Christmas card, a birthday card, you know, the options are kind of endless there, and again, the kind of curiosity of, oh well, what is this loom all about, you know, it looks like a scary thing at first, but once they come and have a wee shot on it, they become addicted really and enjoy the process. We've got a really nice section here where pupils have kind of used kind of numeracy skills to work out how to create this pattern you know which is quite professional looking but then in comparison there's also parts where we've used recycled materials where you know give a completely different effect but still is interesting but just completely different in contrast to the more kind of standard weaving technique I suppose. So we have some more kind of traditional sections of weaving here but using really nice bright colours because the pupils just chose whatever took their fancy. We've got the kind of herringbone weave, we've got the more traditional kind of diagonal patterns and then just your regular standard weave but nice textures that's why we didn't cover it with glass because it's nice to be able to feel the weaving and things and leave all the rough ends as well I think they look really effective. So what's really nice to see is that each contributor has picked a different yarn, a different thread to do their weaving and a different technique and it really pulls together to show that it is a collaborative cloth you know with our hundred contributors all experimenting and showing their own unique part in their own unique threads so it's really clear how many people have taken part by the different sections when you look at it closely. So we're currently, myself and Charlie, are working on weaving in the school's colours. So we have, we're celebrating the 50th birthday of Castle Ahead in March this year. So we've picked out the tie colours you can see are not our favourite colours but they're the school colours so we've got brown, blue and yellow and we've incorporated a wee bit of gold because we feel that's a good like kind of 50 year colour, that's usually the kind of anniversary you have for that. And yeah. um, we're just weaving in anything we find, paper cards, all our different yarns in these colours and we thought we might be able to make a kind of birthday card for Castlehead to celebrate using our weaving skills. I think the main thing is, is they find it really relaxing, you know, kind of during hectic times at the moment when the world was so much uncertainty, I think this is a really therapeutic thing to sit and do and I really like the fact that there is no wrong or right. You know, it's very much like art in that there is no correct answer. It's very much about expressing yourself. You can choose whatever combination of uh, levers to um, change and just really it's about seeing what happens. So in terms of that, there's a wee bit, I suppose, of numeracy skills and the pattern creating. You can work out. You saw Charlie doing it there. He's like, oh, when I do this, this happens. It's very much nice to see that pupils are learning as they're creating. And another really good point Charlie made is the fact that it's so individual, you know, even every part of this looks so, so different because someone's picked a different um, thread or a different technique to try. So I think that's really nice to see and that's kind of a big part of art and design curriculum. Sorry guys, I'm just getting my slideshow to the first slide. So, uh, hello, I'm Gemma Fraser and this evening I'll be talking all things creative. I've put my email address on this slide here, so if you've got any questions, please do get in touch. Sorry, I'm struggling to make the slide change. Here we go. Castlehead School of Creativity, working in partnership with Glasgow School of Art to transform lives, lives through creativity. Vanessa briefly explained the partnership between Castlehead High School and Glasgow School of Art. 
Although the City of Culture bid was unsuccessful, there's still a lot of really great work and amazing projects going on on the back of the bid. And Castlehead's School of Creativity is one of them. You get your School of Dance, School of Music, Sport, so why not have a School of Creativity? And now we do in the heart of Paisley. I'm lucky enough to be the link teacher and work on all things to do with the partnership with Glasgow School of Art. I get time freed up on my timetable weekly to organise and plan all things creative with my colleagues at GSE, while still getting to do what I love, which is to teach art and design. I've listed here our partnership aims, which you can read through. The key thing to note is that it's not about getting pupils to go to Glasgow School of Art, art school, or even embark upon a creative course, but it's about having creativity at the heart of the curriculum in schools to help support learners to prepare for opportunities ahead in all sectors and industries. We see creativity as the capacity to generate and make using technical practical skills, sorry, generate ideas, looking at things with a fresh eye, examining problems with an open mind, making connections, learning from mistakes and using the imagination to explore new possibilities. We've got the four key skills here, which are curiosity, open-mindedness, imagination and problem solving. We don't want the work we're doing to just be focused on the art and design department or even your other obvious creative subjects like music or technical. We want to promote creativity throughout the whole school. The key creativity skills are used already in school, whether it be curiosity in English, open-mindedness in science, imagination in PE or problem solving in maths. It's about highlighting their importance, not changing what we do day to day, but providing opportunities to put creativity at the forefront of learning. We've introduced new courses in the school over the last few years. One being Creative Industries, a very popular course, which is in its fourth year running. We've got Creative Industries at national certificate level, which we co-deliver with West College Scotland, and that's in its second year running now. And in August, we're due to offer a brand new qualification called Creative Thinking. All of these courses are about the process and not just the final outcome. They show our pupils that creativity is about much more than drawing and painting, as these focus on creativity skills and coming up with innovative ideas and concepts. These courses encourage our pupils to problem solve and realise that making mistakes can be key to learning. We've identified that creativity isn't just important for creative jobs, it's an important skill for all to respond to continuous change as we can have to adapt and some Sometimes thinking our feet, as we all know too well in recent situations, the world is constantly changing and these skills are key to that. So that's a bit of background, as I thought it was important to explain how I actually got involved in the Looms in School programme, as it probably wouldn't have happened if I didn't have this role. Now, on to weaving. I took part in a CPD, sorry, that's teacher jargon for a continuous professional development session. And it was at Paisley Abbey in 2019. It was offered to teachers in Renfrewshire as an opportunity to learn how to weave on a hand in a table loom. I had absolutely no previous experience or knowledge. I still only really know the basics of weaving, even although my background before getting into teaching is actually in fashion design. You can see here little samples that I created on the day. The afternoon flew in as I was so invested in finishing my weaving and it was this fantastic session that afterwards I was really hooked. After the CPD session, a few weeks later, I received an email from Ruth Aitken, creative learning worker at One Ren, asking if I'd like to take part in the Looms in School programme by taking a table loom on loan from Paisley Museum. I think I must have been a day I was doing my GSA work as I replied almost instantly really rare if you're teaching, saying absolutely yes. I then had to discuss with my colleagues and figure out where to locate the loom and had no idea as the size and space it would require. Luckily, I've got one of the biggest classrooms in the school, so was able to clear a space to house our loom. So it was on the 18th of November, 2019, that our loom got delivered by Ruth. And it's been in my classroom ever since. It was all set up with a warp on it, thankfully, 
as this is way beyond my basic weaving abilities. With Paisley's historic links to textile manufacturing and being the School of Creativity, it was a brilliant opportunity I really couldn't miss out on. The castle head cloth, sorry, weaving, it develops hand and dexterity skills and encourages the creativity skill of problem solving and also, uh, sorry, it also improves pupils' concentration and focus. So I really thought it was a great opportunity. The loom really did become the talk of the school. I had visitors from all the other teachers and departments to my room wanting to see it. And let's face it, it's a piece of history. Some even say it's kind of like the first computer, an heirloom, excuse the pun. Pupils and staff love the fact that we have something from the museum with such vital and rich history important to Paisley in our school. So as so many people were interested, I came up with the idea for the Castlehead cloth and set out to get as many people as possible to contribute. He saw about it in the video there. We see it as something that unites Paisley's past with Paisley's future. Obviously being creative is a key skill that our pupils will need as they embark on their life journey. We had a hundred contributors, including pupils, teachers and visitors, and their names are all displayed around the piece. It's seven meters long and shaped to say CHS, and it's a real talking point. We even used a section for the school Christmas card. It's something I'm very proud of. We've ended up with the seven meter weaving and I had no clue what to do with it when we'd come to that end of the warp on the loom. But I thought so many people have participated in this, even by people bringing in ribbons, wools and yarns that they had lying around at home. I thought this needs to be displayed. Luckily, as part of the Looms in School project, we had an amazing weaver in residence who was actually a Glasgow School of Art graduate. Gillian Lewis was fantastic and came along on Fridays to teach our creative industries how to weave as part of their skills development course. They all completed a wee wall hanging themselves. Gillian was able to complete, eh, sorry, to take the completed meters of we seven meters of weaving off the loom for me so I could get our collaborative piece of art on the wall. We were actually supposed to visit Glasgow School of Art to see the amazing textiles facilities that they have there, the large scale looms as part of the Looms in School program. But unfortunately, COVID put a stop to those plans. Here we have one of our first contributors to the Castlehead cloth, our very own head teacher, Martin McDonald. He even used, as I said, a section of the cloth for our Christmas card, which was issued to the whole school community. Unfortunately for us, Martin is actually retiring on Friday of this week, and we're sorry that he's weaving. Sorry, I mean leaving. He's been very supportive, and he truly sees the value in all the creative things that we do as a school. But I'm sure our head teacher, or sorry, our next head teacher, will support us just as much. I've got a quote here from Martin. We're delighted to have the Lumen Castlehead High School. It allows our pupils to explore their Paisley heritage and brings to life the skills and creativity that made Paisley such an important industrial centre. These pictures here just show how the cloth really is a key talking point of the school. You can see the scale of it with me sitting in front after tackling it with my staple gun. No mean feat, I can tell you. I'm thankful to say it's still perfect and it sits pride of place still there two years on. It's even used as the background you can see here for our school website, showing that everyone is proud of it. As everybody took part, a key aim of the School of Creativity's vision. This slide shows our most recent kind of weaving work and our project we've been doing at Weaving Club. All the school colours are used to be woven in to celebrate 50 years of Castlehead. I felt if we had a woven Christmas card, it'd be very fitting to have a woven birthday card as well. So sections of weaving form part of our large scale celebratory banners, which also include a beautiful watercolour painting of the school by one of our talented creative industries pupils, Millie. This is all now used as our new school branding with members of staff even using it as their email signature, which is a really nice thing to see. I've even brought the skill of weaving into pupils national four and five art and design folio work. Paper weaving works really well as an effective background as part of pupils graphic design posters, especially effective for Scotland posters as it can give the effect of a tartan. This is marked really well when sent away to SQA and it teaches the pupil another artistic technique. 
For me personally, as I said, after that first CPD session, I was hooked on weaving. My favourite part is how it can be so meditative. I can put aside worries in a daily grind to enjoy something that's just for me. I find the motions of weaving very calming. Depending on my mood, I can zone out and weave up something that's simple, over and under, or I can make more complex shapes. But overall, it's a way to relax and create something at the same time. I experimented and tried to create a woven landscape during lockdown, which is pictured here. I even gave my mum some weaving supplies and encouraged her to give weaving a go when we all found ourselves with that extra time in our hands. On reflection now, it was actually the creative things that seemed to keep us all sane during lockdown. We were making banana bread, we were doing arts and crafts and even creating Zoom quizzes. Thankfully, a bit of a distant memory now. It was after lockdown and on my re return to school from maternity leave that I decided to introduce a lunchtime weaving club. A chance to sit with friends and not have to worry about schoolwork. It's not a rule, but I have noticed that pupils tend not to go on their phones whilst at the club because they're so focused and they really zone out for half an hour, which I think is so important for their health and well-being. The quote they came up with themselves, if you're not weaving, you're leaving, and it shows how seriously they take it. So at Weaving Club, pupils have been doing a variety of things. They've been working on individual small wooden looms in the rainbow colours as part of our Purple Friday activities, as our school is going for the LGBT Gold Charter Award. They've also completed little wall hangings and used cardboard looms for experimental weaves using recycling, sorry, recycled materials. Pupils have then taken these home, and you can see from the video, Charlie's very proud of his work. Also, Gillian, our weaver, set up the loom with a new warp, so they enjoy having a shot on the big loom and teaching each other how to do so. Here, I've got a couple of quotes from two of my star weavers. Unfortunately, Holly couldn't be involved in the video as she was off with COVID on the day. I really enjoy weaving because it's an unusual hobby that you don't see a lot. Me and my friends weave together and get to chat whilst doing so, and it creates a lovely atmosphere. I love weaving because you can do loads of different techniques and use a variety of stuff. It's super fun and really calming and great thing to be able to do with my friends. This slide shows the brilliant resources available on the Paisley Museum website. These were actually created by Gillian and explain everything you need to know to complete your own weaving. There's even easy to follow videos, which I actually have been using at Weaving Club. I would really encourage you to give it a go yourself. And if you've any children or young people at home, this would be a great activity for over the Easter holidays. I'm thinking my 15 month old wee boy is still a wee bit young, but it will definitely be introduced to weaving sometime soon. Here, I've just listed some points as to why weaving is such a great creative skill for young people. In fact, anyone to learn. Weaving is fun and an inexpensive activity. It helps develop fine motor skills. It helps to develop eye-hand coordination and concentration. Problem solving skills. Children need to consider and work through any problems they encounter. Understanding of patterns and sequencing, which is essential for literacy and numeracy development. Creativity and relaxation. Weaving is a quiet, calming activity in which children can develop and express their creative ideas. And weaving teaches children about recycling and reusing materials. Now, not only is Paisley famous for its weaving and textile history, it is recognised for its amazing architecture. So as part of the design faculty for the technical and art department, we take first year pupils on a walking tour of Paisley every year, with it even being virtual thanks to Google Maps in 2020. These are pictures of this year's trip. As you may even notice, the strange looking tentacles on the town hall as it was part of the Halloween festival at the time. Pupils note down facts on the tour and on previous trips, we've been able to visit the secret collection in Paisley, which was a firm favourite tour stop with staff and pupils. They select interesting areas of buildings to inspire a keychain design, which they actually then make in their technical class. And in art, they pick their favourite building to do a continuous line drawing of, which we can see some examples of here. And this then forms part of their investigation for a gift bag design project they complete in their art class. Here, we've got some lovely examples of gift bags pupils designed after taking part in the trip. 
they come up with a pattern based on their building of choice after the walk. Here we can see the gift bag and keychain together, a perfect pairing of a paisley souvenir fit for the museum's gift shop. Pupils really enjoy how this product links together their learning and their art, their technical, and of course, history. We actually took some of the S1 pupils along to the future Paisley exhibition at the Piazza Shopping Centre, where they took part in workshops where they could creatively share their views on the big issues affecting Paisley, and they proudly showed off this work at the exhibition. So, what's next for Castlehead School of Creativity? We have our last Glasgow School of Art portfolio class tomorrow night after school. Pupils from Castlehead and neighbouring high schools have been working on portfolio preparation for 10 weeks with a GSA tutor and producing some lovely work. Then in May, we have our major kind of launch event called Creativity Week. And this is set to be a big kind of launch. You get Literacy Week and Numeracy Week, so why not have a full week focusing on creativity with lots of exciting events planned for our S1 and to S3 pupils as our seniors will be off on exam leave. The first years will be taking part in another future Paisley workshop, this time as part of the Smash Shot Day programme, an opportunity to respond to the Smash Shot story and burning of the cork tradition that are authentic to Paisley and the event. Second years will be taking part in a whole school rapid response event with input from every curriculum area where they'll be put to the test in different scenarios and expected to use their creativity skills to respond to a natural disaster scenario emergency. Third years will be taking part in workshops over two days where they can choose from architecture, fine art or shoe design. And these workshops will take place at school and be delivered by Glasgow School of Art tutors and lecturers. We're also getting a new school mural, a birthday gift to Castlehead from Glasgow School of Art. And the artist will be working with pupils on the mural during the whole of Creativity Week with the unveiling due to take place on the Friday, hopefully with some press and media attention. The theme for the mural is going to be Castlehead, past, present and future. And the weaving and our loom are sure to be incorporated in some way into the design. In June, we'll be taking the full S1 and S2 cohort to visit Glasgow School of Art to complete a variety of creative workshops there and even get a private tour of degree show. We also have a new warp still on the loom that Jillian set up for us. I think it's about two metres long so far. So any ideas as to what we should do with that piece of weaving when finished, please let me know. Pupils are still keen to have a shot of the loom and I always let them do so when they finish their artwork in class. As much as it is very exciting for the museum to be reopening, it'll be very sad to see our loom leave us as it's very much a part of Castlehead now. If you want to find out anything else, please check out our WordPress article and podcast. And for all things creative, be sure to give our Instagram page a follow castlehead underscore creates. I believe the links to these and the weaving resources will be sent out after this event. Last thing for me then to say is thanks to all the partners involved in the Looms and School programme. It's been a fantastic project to be involved in and Castlehead will continue with our weaving and all things creative. Thanks for listening. I must say it's quite weird and surreal delivering a PowerPoint to a silent audience in an empty room, not something I'm very used to in school. So thanks for listening and I'll now pass you back to Vanessa. Hello, well thank you so much for that Gemma, that really was a fascinating insight into the Looms in Schools project and the really quite surprising benefits that it's brought, well, what looks like everybody in your school. Now then, let's move on to the question and answer. Hopefully that's a little bit more interactive and a bit more what you're used to. <laughs> uh, if you haven't already posed a question, if you're listening in the audience, do remember to pop them into the Q&A box rather than the chat box. We'll keep the chat box for, for any um, comments, but it's a little bit hard to ride both at once. So do put your questions in the Q&A function. Just click on the Q&A tab at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And um, as well, state clearly if you'd like to keep them anonymous. 
We do have some questions coming in already. We've got one from Aileen that says, um, it would be really interesting to know if your loom has worked differently for different ages, abilities, genders, so and different um, learning and emotional needs. So what are the, the main, I suppose, the main learning points that you've taken away from having this amazing opportunity in your school? I think the main thing, as I say, I am not an expert weaver. It was really just that one session that I learned myself. And with the large table loom, I'm very much encouraged the pupils just to have a go. You know, I, I'm very clear saying to them, like, be careful. It is obviously an old thing. You know, don't break it. But just be experimental. You know, so they try different combinations with the levers. And they think, I wonder what will happen here. And I say, well, give it a go and see what you can do. And obviously, they can all achieve something through it because they can all produce something different. Yes, some might be a wee bit fancier, a wee bit more of a, a creative pattern, but they can all do it. Absolutely no bother. It doesn't matter the ability level at all. Everyone can weave, really. Now, you've touched on it in your answer just just now but talk me through how you break down that fear of breaking something or like <laughs> launching into something that you don't know because the loom itself is quite an impressive piece of kit isn't it and I can imagine it would possibly be quite intimidating so how do you get people confident and get people playing rather than going oh yeah, I think it is just obviously demonstrating it first and, you know, letting them get a feel for it. Because as Charlie even said himself, he said, at first I was scared of it. But once they have a feel, and the comb is the scariest part because that's loose on the loom. But once I show that that's all connected, that it can't, you know, unless you're very forceful, it can't break off. I demonstrate myself doing it. They have a go. And then you find actually they're really keen to teach each other. I say, oh, well, do you want to show a so-and-so and they'll go I'll do it I'll do it so it certainly works that they build their confidence quite quickly just by trying and it is that playfulness I love some of the the photographs you were showing that you're using some quite surprising materials to weave in talk to me about some of those um some of the more unexpected things that you've managed to weave with yeah, I mean, literally anything. We've been cutting up plastic um, carrier bags. There's obviously, there's so many of those lying around. And people, even teachers, one of the computing teachers had been doing, I don't know what you call it, it's the large scale knitting with the very kind of thick wool. She had been knitting something with that, but didn't want it anymore. So brought that in and said, you can add that to your weaving club, but you can have that for your loom. So people were donating stuff. They had maybe they'd been knitting for babies at home over lockdown and things. And they thought we'll we'll donate it to the castle head cloth which I think is really nice and as I say it's something that ties it all together because everybody had a wee kind of piece or a wee part to play in it. So it really was then an intergenerational project if you're making things for little babies okay they might not be actually doing the weaving themselves but presumably drawing in materials and knowledge and interest from older generations as well. Oh, absolutely. Like, obviously, um, kind of people in the history department were really interested because for different reasons to maybe somebody down in PE, they were wanting to see what this was. But the historians were wondering, oh, what type is it? I wonder how old it is. So as I say, it really was a talking point and still is of the school. And it's just been so nice to have it. Got another question here. Have you found other teachers and schools are surprised by what you've done? What's been the reaction? To be honest, I don't know that too many of them until now <laughs> really would know about it, you know, because uh, the only time that we really share things is with our SQA folios. And there's only a really small part of that in the ones that I showed with the paper weaving. So the loom work is really not kind of something I've shared with the other art departments, but you know, if any of them are listening, they're more than welcome to come along and have a shot and, you know, take part in our kind of weaving <laughs> phenomenon that going on at Castle Head. Now, we've got a question from Marie who says, thanks, Gemma, what a great project and loved hearing Charlie present his work. With the news that your loom is leaving soon, do you have plans to bring in another as maybe a permanent fixture? I hope so, she says. <laughs> well, you never know. This is the kind of thing that my school is very supportive. If our loom leaves, 
I mean, I, I, I'm i very ignorant to the cost of these things. I mean, I could check it out and see if, you know, it's something we could maybe do some fundraising for because I don't imagine they're cheap. But we do have um, the little kind of wooden looms and obviously we can weave on cardboard. But you never know if the demand is there and um, I get the petition going. You never know, we might be purchasing our own loom if we lose this one. Now, I love the way that you've broadened out the the uses of weaving and the concept of weaving to, to go out and do your walking tours, to continue into your bags. Have you been surprised yourself at just the, the tentacles that the weaving project has sent out into not only the school, but also the wider community and the art world as well? Oh, absolutely, Vanessa. Honestly, like this, even my colleagues, I think some of them are on it now. I had said, I'm going to go to do this weaving CPD. And then literally now I'm doing a presentation talking about it. It's grown arms and legs, but it's fantastic. And as I say, it's so key to Paisley's history. And, you know, it's such a rich and amazing thing that we should be really proud of. So I'm so keen to teach the pupils about it. And I will continue to do so. OK, well, that ties in with a question that we've had from John Maitland, who says, an amazing programme with a great teacher. There you go. Uh, you've got a fan already. Uh, <laughs> what present future um, needs to do you? Uh, I think you probably need to talk to us a little bit more about your, your, what you pr plan to do in the present and the future. So it really is just all to do with the School of Creativity. I'm so passionate that this is such an important skill for our young people. And I really, I don't know if you'd say the stigma attached to, oh, I'm not creative, I'm not good at drawing and painting. That's so not, not the case. You know, it's very much about the thought rather than um, the thought and the process rather than the end kind of result sometimes. So I'm really keen as our my fantastic department the, to keep promoting these new creative subjects in the school. And, you know, weaving can be a part of those, you know, it could, we could tie in projects on that. And hopefully with the museum reopening, we can be involved and, you know, get some uh, work like with the pupils in there when it's opened again. Have you found the the weaving project has ha has had any unexpected benefits for maybe children who are harder to reach sometimes absolutely like it was fascinating the pupils who I would think would not be interested at all were literally at break and things when we were first doing the castle head cloth can I do more can I bring my pal you know to join in and things and I was like okay not who I expected but I think it's just the fact that it was a collaborative thing and they knew that they would were doing taking part in it and it would be something that the school would always have I think was a big kind of kind of hook for them as well which was really nice and as I say I use it as like at the end of lessons a kind of a reward if you get your work finished you can have a wee shot on the loom you can do a wee bit of weaving and they're all they're all desperate to do so which is lovely to see. Now I'm really interested by that is it seven metre long um, yeah. piece of weaving at the front tell me a little bit more about that and also the impact that something like that has when you first walk into Castlehead? I think it's very unexpected, you know, and I'm not going to lie, I was very much, when I had the seven metres folded up in my hand, I thought, what am I going to do with this? And it was very much, I thought, well, it needs to be displayed. I'm so, so proud of it, as are all the contributors. We need it to be at the office where anybody who's visiting the school, any other teachers, any pupils, um, walking past, always see it. And as I said in the video, I was very keen for it not to be covered in plastic. And you would think over time, over two years, it would have started to, you know, people touching it or whatever, and it might get damaged. But it literally is absolutely perfect because people respect it. They're proud of it. And it's a really nice and, as you say, very different kind of focal point that you walk in and think, what, what is that? You know, so it's really nice to have it there. And how important do you think it is for the children and adults playing with the, the loom and the weaving to have something that's tactile? I think there's a lot of art that's shrouded in, oh, you know, it's, you've got to be really skilled, you've got to be very delicate and, you know, have brilliant hand-eye coordination. I know you've said in your talk that it improves that. Yeah. But... Just for maybe those people who never considered themselves natural born artists, 
how important is the tactile nature of weaving um, for, for people like that? Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, we've got a pupil in S2 now who is um, partially sighted and he really enjoyed, he came up to class one time, I, I don't know, his class were away on a trip and he was um, left behind in school for maybe a consent form issue or something, but he said, can I have a shot of it? And he went up really close to it to be able to do it, but you're absolutely right. He loved being able to feel and obviously all the different yarns have a different texture. So it is one of our senses that are so important. It's one of the visual elements, texture, and it's something that you're right we don't really kind of focus on sometimes in our art and design work but he really liked the fact that he created a little section on the loom and he could feel what he'd created because it's not obviously not just about sight so that was really nice to see and he's he's again still a keen weaver which is nice and what for you has been I suppose the biggest joy out of the, the weaving project what's been the we've talked about surprises before but has there been a moment when you've just kind of had that, you know, bursting with pride or amazement or satisfaction? To be fair, that's like a reason why I love my job. You do, it's great. You get that quite a lot of times. Like I'm lucky in that respect. But in terms of the weaving thing, the fact like, I just thought, okay, I'll make a wee weaving club and I didn't know MD would come. But the fact that pupils come again and again and they take it so seriously. Charlie, for example, is oh, he's obsessed with weaving. So when we take um, the first years to Glasgow School of Art, he's going to get a personal tour of all the looms and things because I've said he has to. I think he's going to be a weaver like when he grows up. So I think that's really nice to see that, you know, how invested they are. So you don't mind giving up your lunchtime if, they are, if they're going to enjoy it and gain from it. So I'm, I'm interested as well to know, from your professional point of view, I mean, obviously you started out in fashion design. Yeah. What, have, what have you learned to make you a better teacher by this project? I think just, um, oh, that's, a, well, that's a tough question. I suppose just like I always say to my classes and it's almost kind of like my mantra and that's why I like, again, being an art and design teacher is the fact there's no right or wrong you know it's also a subjective and even with weaving there's no right or wrong you know you can do two rows of up and two rows of down you know it's it's totally up to you it's so individual and that's very much what art and design curriculum is about as well and that's obviously very key to creativity you've got to be very open-minded not set in the one direction it can go in lots of different ways which is is really nice to see and what's been the reaction of the pupils in general. Do you think this has affected them out with the school as well? I mean, has it given them more confidence? Has it, you talk about Charlie wanting to be a weaver. I'm interested, I suppose, both in the, the creativity, but also those social and emotional skills and confidence and belief in themselves that they can try something that might look really intimidating and make something beautiful yeah that is so right like as I say it's not about art and design like you know drawing and painting sometimes weaving is a great skill that if you aren't as strong as doing maybe realistic drawing then you can produce a beautiful piece of weaving with the simplest of kind of techniques you know it doesn't need to be all fancy with different patterns and things going on just with your choice of colors maybe repeating colors maybe introducing different textures and things you can make something really interesting and something that like you see you can be really proud of so yeah I think the pupils are really engaged with it and it doesn't matter your ability level you can you can produce a lovely piece of weaving if if you want to. So what are your take home messages then for your own professional practice and also in a, maybe in a separate answer from what you would say to other teachers as well but start on your own professional practice. What are the real key messages that you've learned and taken home and maybe change the way you do things? I suppose just like giving everything a go you know as I say I'm really lucky to have this opportunity. I am. Um, I would have probably maybe received that email before, but would have never got to reading it. And if I had, I'd have probably been far too late. But I'm so lucky to have this time freed up in my timetable to focus on all things creative 
that I think um, Booth would know I was probably one of the first people to reply and say, do you know what? I know nothing about weaving, but I'm going to get this loom to our classroom. I'm going to learn about it and we'll give it a go. So I suppose it's that kind of attitude. And I think the pupils at Castlehead have got that attitude as well. You know, they'll, they'll give everything a try. We um, Before we had our link with Glasgow School of Art, it used to be, you know, seen as that very esteemed high. I mean, it's a fantastic, it's got such a great reputation. But now my pupils are very much, yeah, I'll go there, absolutely no bother. You know, they're not, they're not determined in any way. They're very confident, which is lovely to see. And I think the partnership that we have helps it because they've been on visits, they've had tutors in from there to the school. So, you know, it's not something that's unaccess uh, unattainable for them, really. It's great to see. Mm -hmm. And what about other teachers? What would you say to them about um, about what they should be maybe contemplating for the first time, sort of pushing their own boundaries out in what they're doing and the, the risks that they're take, taking? I suppose for an art and design teacher, it's to look at other courses that are now out there to, you know, we need to adapt to the world. As I said, the world is changing, you know, the kind of traditional art and design curriculum is great if you maybe want to be an art and design teacher, be an artist, be a painter, but people might want to get into these new jobs now that are like um, app development, game design. So they need these creative skills. So yes, you need to be creative to do art and design, but the creative industries courses that we do offer uh, kind of give a bit more of a kind of great understanding to get into these industries, which are booming at the moment. So that's, I think, the place to go now. Check out the creative industries. Um, and what about the other subjects like history I mean this is so embedded in the cultural history of Paisley isn't it and other mm. textile areas as well do you think it's given historians more of an insight into the art world and artists more of an insight into the historical context of their communities absolutely yeah as I say like this is not this whole partnership project is not just about the creative the what you would say creative of subjects is about the all the subjects because they use these creative skills throughout their lessons I know that we've got fantastic teachers in our school that you know think outside the box and don't just stand up there and deliver screeds and screeds of information they get the pupils doing active learning and trying out different things and the history department absolutely um, have linked with us and we work on projects together and we even as an excellent one that we can do more with I suppose. So Gemma, seeing as you're such an enthusiastic and clearly brilliant art and design teacher, if I were to give you unlimited funds, what would you do with them? Oh, well, my colleagues will laugh. Um, I buy a lot of pencils. <laughs> That's like our war cry in school. We just, pencils get, I don't know, they just disappear. So that would be something we'd need. But I mean, really, I think you don't even need a lot. You know, it's not about the money. It's about the, the ideas. It's about having the, the bravery and the creative thinking to try things, you know. So, yeah, I wouldn't, I would obviously take the money. I'd buy a lot of really good um, supplies for the art and design department. But as I say, I don't think it's needed. I think you can be very creative and be very successful if you just have the, the right ideas and right mind frame. Now, we've got probably time for one or two more questions. We've got one come, that's come in from Anne asking, were there any negative reactions from parents, especially parents of boys, thinking along the stereotype, of course, it's the, the incorrect stereotype, isn't it, that textile production was mainly a female, a female career, whereas actually it's kind of very, very male-dominated throughout history. But did you get any pushback at all from anyone? No, I have to say, like, well, not that um, they fed back to me. I know, <laughs> not that I was aware of. No, and I generally could even say as well, we uh, we get quite a good uh, mix of uh, male and females taking the subjects and uh, taking part in even weaving club, you know. So, no, I wouldn't say it was an issue for us. Thankfully, this day and age, it's just accepted that, you know, the history was maybe seen as that, but I was explaining to pupils even your clothes you're wearing now these have all been woven maybe now on machinery and things but it's so so important so no they all really enjoyed learning about it okay and going back to a, a previous um lecture that we had with Bevan O'Daly who was talking about repairing and the ecological side the environmental aspects of weaving when that 
close relationship you get with textiles and fabric, you're more likely to look after them. Do you think it's brought people, your students and your colleagues, closer to the daily materials that we handle, we, we use in art, we use in design, we use in construction? Do you think it gives people more empathy towards the, the material world around them? I think, yeah, absolutely, because you, you appreciate the work involved, you know, especially making that seven metres, like, that probably took us months upon months, you know, so you think, wow, back in the day, this is literally how everything was produced, you really take your hat off to the, the blood, sweat and tears that must have gone into it, and we do, we do take your granted now, fast fashion, and you can just pick up things, and, you know, uh, the price is not reflective of probably the work involved in making some of these things. So, yeah, I would really like to hope so. And I think the pupils realise, even from making a tiny little part, how long and the process behind it takes. As the slowest weaver in the world, I can certainly <laughs> agree with that. Gemma, thank you so much for what's been an absolutely brilliant insight into your Looms in Schools project. Um, and not only thank you to Gemma Fraser, but also thank you to you, our audience, for watching and for your great questions um, and comments in the chat box as well. Please can you, if you haven't already, open up your chat box and post your appreciation to Gemma. Just give her a little bit of feedback. Um, it's been a brilliant evening. Thank you so much. So Gemma Fraser, a formal thank you to you, but thank you very much. Now, Thanks, if you, you're welcome. If you've enjoyed tonight's talk, please do take a look online at all our previous talks that are up there. Just search for One Ren, that's one R E N, on the YouTube um, on YouTube, and keep an eye as well on social media for news of the remarkable collection at Paisley Museum. Until then, a very big thank you for, to all the team at Paisley Museum Reimagined for making events like this happen. Please don't forget to fill out the very short survey form that will pop up as soon as you log off. It'll only take, take a few minutes and it really does give us a lot of really good information to work with for future events. But for now, from me, Vanessa Collingridge, Thank you so much for watching tonight. I hope you've gone away inspired and ready to try your own weaving projects at home. But thank you so much for helping us celebrate the inspirational work of Paisley old and young weavers right up to the modern day. Thanks very much and bye for now.